Morning, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining me for today's devotion. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit late. We're finishing this series on building strong relationships, and we're going to move into Genesis. Um, but I wanted to spend one more little tidbit here, a little more time together with you on relationships. A few weeks ago, we talked from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the great love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. You know, and that came right between chapters 12 and 14. Pretty profound, right? All right. Um, but Paul talks in, in chapter 12 about spiritual gifts and how we're one body and we use our gifts to strengthen the body. And then chapter 14, he goes into using these gifts in more detail. But tucked right in the middle... Paul says, now I will show you a more excellent way. It's the way of love he's talking about. Because you can have all these wonderful gifts, but you don't have love. You're an annoying gong or a clanging cymbal. And you could do all kinds of wonderful miracles, have faith to move mountains, even die a martyr's death. But if you don't have love, you gain nothing. Um, and he goes on to define what Christian love looks like. And there's one little phrase from verse 5 that, that's caused me some grief. Uh, it says, love does not insist on its own way. Uh, Trudy said when, one time when she was taught this chapter, they would substitute their own name here in the place of love. So Jeff does not insist on having his own way. You know, that sounds all well and good, but does that mean I can't have my convictions? That we will not insist on the truth? You know, Paul could never have meant this because his own record would disagree. Sometimes love must insist on having its own way. Uh, just like Paul did. You know, historically, the Jews and the Gentiles wouldn't mix. They would, they would not have dinner with, in each other's homes. They would not visit each other. And then one day, Peter was on the roof, and he fell into a trance and had this vision. Um, and this big sheet with all kinds of animals was let down from heaven. You know, things us Gentiles love to eat. Maybe there's little lobsters crawling around on the sheet. Uh, ham crawling, walking around there and bacon and, and, and all these good things. Escargot maybe was, was sliming around. Um, and a voice told Peter to rise, kill and eat. Oh, Peter said, no, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. But then it happened three times. And then he woke up. Right as messengers from Cornelius' house showed up asking for Peter. Now, Cornelius was a Gentile, but God had just showed him that don't consider unclean things I call clean. Uh, Paul, uh, Peter went to their house, shared the gospel with them, and baptized them. But then later, certain high officials, high-ranking Jewish officials, came to town, and he withdrew from Gentiles. And Paul opposed him to his face. You know, Paul insisted on having his own way because his way was the way of the gospel. See, there's times when the glory of God and the truth of gospel and the joy of others are at stake. And when this happens, we must insist on the way of truth, the way of love. It might seem unloving, but it's actually the most loving thing. Love does not insist on its own way, but man, the good of his neighbor. Because we do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, we consider others more important, more significant than ourselves. See, Paul lived love. And what that looked like sometimes was to confront a brother with the truth. He was not demanding his own way out of a personal preference, but because it was the way of truth. You know, we have personal freedoms in Christ. And love does not push my freedoms on you or let you push your freedoms on, on me or others. Oh, man, so where does that leave us? Because sometimes we must insist on our own way. And at other times, we absolutely must not insist on having our own way. So how do we know? <laughs> you know, that's why God gave us his word. We're to know his word and let that shape our understanding of the world around us. And take advantage of the Holy Spirit living in you. Guys, we have Christian brothers and sisters who, could, who can lend advice. Living the Christian life is not for sissies. We're not called to be a doormat. And... And not insisting on our own way is not a call for this. But what we do, though, is we stand up for what is contrary to God's word or is harming you or others. I am going to insist on having my own way because it's not my way, but it's his way. See, we're to treat everybody with dignity and respect and watch out for our brothers and sisters. I'm not going to allow my siblings to be attacked because of their skin tone or their gender or their social economic standing or their age or their religious or political preferences or anything else. Guys, we are called to pick up our crosses daily and follow him. That means we lay down our lives for his, for his will every day. Not my will, but yours be done, Lord. Love does not insist on having its own way. 
I could joyfully lay down my personal preferences and my personal freedoms even for the good of others if it does not conflict with the gospel and my love of God or others. And if it does, then we must insist on God's way. Love you guys. Have a great day.